May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Guk Audio Podcast. I'm D.C. Puba of Guk Audio and Guk Archives, preserving the legacy of Shinju Suzuki and those whose paths crossed his and anything else that comes to mind. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable and free from economic hardship and able to get out and do whatever it is you want within the limitations of the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So um, what I thought I'd do uh, now for today's podcast is to read the introduction from Zen is right here. And then uh, maybe tomorrow or in a few days, I'll read the introduction to Zen is Right Now, uh, the parts that aren't in here, because (laughs) I cheated and I quoted (laughs) like a couple of paragraphs from here in the introduction to Zen is Right Now. And Shambhala let me get away with that. Um, Because, you know, it's not the point of the book, just... uh, give the people a rough idea of what they're doing. So I I think it's good every now and then in these podcasts to give you something sort of, uh, you know, basic like this. I mean, there's bound to be somebody out there that doesn't know these things. Uh, So anyway, here we go. Uh, Incidentally, this is the second introduction. There was it's based on the introduction to the original book, which was To Shine One Corner of the World, which was a Broadway book. Broadway, part of, uh, I think it was part of Bantam. No, I forget. It was part of one of the big publishers. That was part of Random House. That's part of Bertelsmann. And, oh, you wouldn't believe how they're all joined together. It's now, it's Crown, Harmony. And when I deal with them, which I hardly ever do, is Penguin Random House. So, uh, because I still would deal with them on Crooked Cucumber, almost never, ever, but I did recently. Uh, when I uh, I got hold of them and said, hey, I could do a second edition of that, and, you know, it wasn't worth it to them, doesn't sell enough. Uh, and fine with me, because <laughs> Uh, because uh, I don't make any money on any of those books that are sold because it's never paid off its advance. Um, They would have to sell quite a few more books before it paid off its advance, which might happen. Who knows? We never know what's going to happen in the future. So that left me free to uh, do other things uh, with that information because uh, I did a second edition, worked on it a lot, and worked on it with you all listening <laughs> as I read the entire Crooked Cucumber uh, and made the changes as I was reading it. So I've got a second edition now, and I finished the audio book for Crooked Cucumber. We'll, see, here, we'll wait and see what's happening with that. Uh, but anyway, so uh, a couple of years after uh, uh, Crooked Cucumber came out, uh, to shine one Corner of the World came out, and uh, it it went out of print after a few years, and uh, Shambhala picked it up and uh, made it Zenners right here. So it had a slightly different introduction uh, because of the different names. Um, so anyway, here's the one from the current Zenners right here. And you know, Zenners right here uh, just was republished, slightly uh, updated uh, with, you know, some slight corrections and changes that you'd never notice from the uh, original sentence right here. Um, and, and uh, it was, you know, it came out with Zen is Right Now. Uh, they were released as hardback together with matching covers. You can sort of fit together. It's sort of cool. And uh, e-books, 
you know, Kindle books and uh, podcasts. No, not podcasts, audio books. Uh, I don't read it. Brian Nishi reads it. He's very good. And it's very, you know, beautifully done with like bells and uh, nature sounds from Japan. Uh, yeah, my, my, my work on the audio book for Crooked Cucumber is a little more uh, down home. Mm. So anyway, here is the introduction to Zen is right here. Shunyu Suzuki Roshi, a Soto Zen priest from Japan, arrived in San Francisco in 1959 at the age of 55. He came to minister to a congregation of Japanese Americans at a temple on Bush Street in Japantown called Sokoji, Soto Zen Mission. His mission, however, was more than what his hosts had in mind for him. He brought his dream of introducing to the West the practice of the wisdom and enlightenment of the Buddha as he had learned it from his teachers. To those who were attracted to the philosophy of Zen, he brought something to do. Zazen, Zen meditation, and Zen practice, the extension of Zazen into daily life. A community of students soon formed around him. Many of them moved into apartments in the neighborhood so they could walk to Sokoji for Zazen in the early mornings and evenings. In 1964, a small group of students began to meet for daily Zazen in Los Altos, south of San Francisco. Other groups formed in Mill Valley and Berkeley. Suzuki Roshi, as he was called, would join each one once a week when he could. He lived exclusively at Sokoji until 1967, when Zen Mountain Center was established at Tassara Springs, deep in the wilderness of Monterey County. This mountain retreat was not only the first Buddhist monastery for Westerners, it also broke from tradition in allowing men and women, married and single, to practice together. It is the setting of many of the accounts in this book. In November of 1969, Suzuki Roshi left Sokoji to found the city center on Page Street in San Francisco as a residential Zen practice center. He died there in 1971. To Suzuki Roshi, the heart of a Zen temple is the Zendo, or Zazen Hall. There he would join his students in Zazen, often just called sitting, formal meals and services in which sutras, Buddhist scripture, were chanted. There he would also give lectures, sometimes called Dharma talks. Dharma is a Sanskrit word for Buddhist teaching. Usually one or two 40-minute periods of zazen were held early in the morning and in the evening. Sometimes there would be sashin when zazen would continue from early morning till night for up to seven days, broken only by brief walking periods, services, meals, lectures, and short breaks. During sashin, Suzuki would conduct formal private interviews with his students called doksan. Suzuki's main teaching was silent, the way he picked up a teacup or met someone on a path or in the hallway or how he joined with his students in work, meals, and meditation. But when the occasion arose to speak, he made an impression. This book is a record of such impressions. Each brief exchange stored away in the mind of an individual who carried it along for 30 years or more. Their glimpses of Suzuki Roshi show that his way was not symptomatic or formulaic. He emphasized that the ungraspable spirit of Buddhism is what continues, while the expression of that spirit always changes. The teachings of Buddha, he said, were for particular moments, people, and situations, and were relative and imperfect. Shunryu Suzuki touched thousands of people, Buddhist and non-Buddhist, 
many directly and many more through a now well-known collection of his lectures called Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Today, there are small Buddhist groups all over the West of his lineage and of other lineages that exist in no small part because of the efforts of this man. In 1999, I published a biography of Suzuki titled Crooked Cucumber, The Life and Zen Teaching of Shunryu Suzuki. I continue to collect the oral history of those times to interview and correspond with people about their experiences with Suzuki Roshi and Zen practice and to reflect on what I learned in the five years I studied with him. Zen is right here is drawn from those records, from Zen Center archives, and from a few other sources. The title derives from one of the exchanges in this book. Zen is everywhere, Suzuki Roshi said, agreeing with a student. But for you, Zen is right here. <laughs> I hope you enjoy the wisdom of Suzuki Roshi. He had great confidence in yours. Hmm. Okay, and then I have a note at the bottom. There are two other edited collections of Junyu Suzuki lectures, Branching Streams, Flow in the Darkness, and Not Always So, Practicing the True Spirit of Zen. Hmm. Okay. I'll tell you one thing I did there that I don't do anymore, and I don't know if I changed it. I'm pro I'm pro I, 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 I'm... I don't think I changed it for the uh, 2021 edition. I left it there. Is uh, I no longer call him Suzuki Roshi. Uh, I just call him Shunyu Suzuki, unless I'm speaking to fellow students or, you know, in a more uh, a way like that. But uh, the word Roshi has been so overused, and there's you're going to call him Roshi. There's people who've been, you know, studying Zen and got transmission and have groups and this and that. There's zillions of them that we don't call Roshi. We call him, you know, Reb or something like that. So um, uh, I've, I now carefully do not use the word Roshi for any of the Roshis or any of the teachers I just use their their names and identify them as a teacher. Or, you know, or I'll quote somebody that says Roshi, or I'll say they're called Roshi or something. We really need to, you know, identify them or something like that. Anyway, it's just a little, it's one of my uh, stylistic decisions. So uh, that's the introduction to Zen is right here. And... It's been a pleasure being with you again. And until next time, this is DC Puba of QQ Audio and QQ Archives coming to you from Sleepy Sanur with Doggy Bandita, Feline Cuchita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening. Thank you.